Are you ready to do this? This is who tech is different from every convention conference that's out there. There's nothing that's the same except a bunch of really smart fucking people being in the same place. It's just incredible to see an event that's only been uh, here for two years grow to this, this type of size. It's, it's really impressive. Imagine one of the best tech conferences you've ever been to with only lesbians, basically, and allies. Whatever level you are at, technically or professionally, there will be somebody to meet you and help carry you forward. My least favorite expression is unconscious bias, which I think there's oh, nothing... Tell us why. Because there's nothing unconscious about it. You know what you're doing. It's really nice to be somewhere where that's not a sausage fest and to really get uh, really smart women involved in technology. It's almost like a TED Talk, except with cooler people. <laughs> We've decided to name our coding scholarship after you, the Lesbian Who Tech Edie Windsor Coding Scholarship Fund. Please welcome to the stage Edie Windsor. You just had this award named after you. How do you feel? Well, as soon as I stop crying, okay, I'll be real fine. <laughs> the essential aspects of emotion and creativity and transparency and authenticity. These are things that a lot of corporations are just beginning to discover. And Lesbian Who Tech is so, so far ahead of the game. It's a place that you can find new friendships. It's a place that you can find new jobs. It's the place that, that you can find new mentors and, and hear new and exciting ideas. This community is here so that we can be more than we think we can be. And when we are together, that truly is possible. Lesbians Who Tech makes that possible. So what are you going to do to create the world you want to see? What kind of leader are you going to be? I can, I can always tell what crowd I have when people laugh at certain parts and don't laugh at certain parts. So I'm just saying, guys, we gotta, we gotta warm it up in here a little bit. Um, so I'm Leanne Pittsford, I'm the founder of Lesbians Who Tech. How many of you have heard Lesbians Who Tech before today? Raise your hand. All right, all right. How many of you have been to one of our summits? Raise your hand. All right, good, this is great. I usually talk in front of people that have mostly been, so we're gonna do this together. Um, so to break you in, we start every Lesbians Who Tech event with a high five. So turn to your neighbor. Give them a high five. A little group participation. Feels good, right? So I started Lesbians Who Tech because I'd go to a lot of tech events and they'd look like this. Um, and then uh, I'd go to a lot of LGBTQ events and they'd look a lot like this. And so I started to wonder, do lesbians in tech actually exist, right? The truth is I didn't really know. And so like most entrepreneurs, I did an experiment. And it turns out that we do. We actually have 20,000 members worldwide. We've done events in 37 cities all over the world. So we exist, we know that. Um, we've done events uh, in Tel Aviv, Brazil. We're doing summits um, in Singapore this year, Mexico City, Paris. Um, we just launched a C3 program. How many of you uh, know who Edie Windsor is? Raise your hand. Great, so she's our historic uh, hero behind the DOMA case. So she's literally the reason that LGBTQ people can marry the person they love. And what you probably also didn't know about her is that she was a software engineer at IBM. And she's literally the first person in all of Manhattan to receive a personal computer. So we named our coding scholarship after her. So far we've awarded um, 40 scholars 50% um, tuition to the boot camp of their choice. We're about to launch a program called Bring a Lesbian to Work Day. You can laugh, you can laugh guys, we're doing this together. Um, so the idea is that mentoring is really hard to scale, right? You don't, even though you have all these things on paper, maybe you don't hit it off in person, but every, everyone has one day. So it's a one day shadow career program and if you're an ally, you can absolutely be a mentor and we will be asking you to do that. Um, and the things uh, we, we really do uh, super well are summit. So most of our audience is in the mid-level talent space, um, our revenue model, uh, is around recruiting and retention. We literally would not have an organization without that, and I think it's an important point to note. Um, something that I like to say to groups, especially that have much experience with LGBTQ community, and we're talking about economic uh, prosperity, which this conference uh, is in particular focusing on, is obviously women make less than men, right? So when you put two women together versus two gay men, 
you're actually at opposite ends of the economic spectrum, right? So if, just think about that for a, se a second, straight couples in the middle. Um, and I think that's an important part of what we're doing at Lesbian 2 Tech. But one of the, the pain points we've really seen is around how do tech companies hire from non-traditional sources and how do we create companies that reflect the, the people who use them, that use their products, right? Even at Lesbian 2 Tech in our 20,000 person community, it's fairly niche, but we've really seen this pain point. And how do we change the face of technology, right? We all have seen the press, right? This, and there's actually been a new round where people are releasing their um, you know, second studies and literally it hasn't changed in the last couple of years. And it's not because companies aren't thriving, right? We're, we're building self-driving cars and all these things and we're putting so much money towards diversity and increasing representation and yet it's really not changing, it's not moving. Um, why? Well, I mean, societal change is hard, right? Especially when we're talking about systemic racism, sexism, sexism homophobia, right? These things are huge problems that are all interconnected. Um, sadly, the world is not fair, right? It's really not fair. <laughs> Too soon? Too soon, yeah. Anyways, so, um, but we can literally predict how much money you are gonna make with, I think, over 90% certainty based on your zip code. So how is that fair, right? We all sort of can get behind that, that the world is not fair. So last year, uh, BuzzFeed wrote an article about Lesbians to Tech. They said if, if uh, tech conferences were more like Lesbians to Tech, tech would be a better place. I obviously couldn't agree more. Um, I think if the world were more like Lesbians to Tech, the world would be a better place. And that's because we've done something really intentional, what I call intentional inclusion. Right? So when we built our ecosystem, um, the LGBT community has also historically been very white, very male. Um, I'm a di big data geek. And so when we started, I said, look, we're going to set goals and we're going to use data to track it. Um, so we set this goal early on. We hit it within the second summit. Um, but when I stop doing it, it starts to go away from me, right? I'm obviously white. Uh, my network is white. More white women ask me to speak. So I have to be super intentional about this. But this is something we've hit for the last six summits. Um, this one's really, really important. You have to show up. You have to show up for yourself and you have to show up for other people. And there are only two ways you can show up. Only two. So it's really simple. Your time and your money. And your money is a lot more scalable. Right? Um, and as allies, we have to show up. We have to show up for women. We have to show, show up for transgender people, LGBTQ people, people of color. We have to show up. We have to use our time and our money to show up for them. And I say a lot, a lot of this to lesbians, um, but you know, a lot of lesbian bars, they're closing, lesbian spaces are dying. After Ellen, the biggest lesbian blog, went out of business. And so I say to them, you also have to show, show up for yourself. You can stay at home watching Scandal two nights a week, but not more than that. Um, straight people don't watch Scandal. It's not, not a big thing in your community, yeah? Come on. This instant, instant roar with the lesbians. They, they love their Scandal. Um, you guys are learning a lot today. It's not, it's not just about economics, right? Um, intentional inclusion, it's also about giving first. You have to build trust. You know, a lot of um, you know, gay men in particular will come up to me and sort of say, how can I get our LGBT groups to be 50% women? Um, one of the things, I showed you the photo, but this is true across the, the board. It doesn't matter what country you're in, what industry, every LGBTQ event is 70 to 90% male. So women know when they go, it's going to be mostly male. And even when you say it's an LGBTQ event, they actually choose not to go because they know it's going to be male. So I say to them, you have to give first. Come to Lesbian 2 Tech. We want you there. We want allies there. You have to go to the communities that you're not a part of first. Um, one of my favorite stories about giving first, uh, three years ago, the White House asked uh, me to help produce uh, the first ever LGBTQ Tech and Innovation Summit. Um, and obviously one of my first calls was to Megan Smith to ask her to speak. Um, she was at Google X at the time. She said yes, graciously, she changed her plans, and it was actually there that she got recruited to be the Chief Technology Officer of the United States. This is one of the most powerful stories about giving first, investing in diversity, and out of it you have a more than qualified candidate, right? Super powerful. Um, and, that's, and that's really building trust. Right? Because when you give first, then you automatically get that trust and it's so much easier to grow. You know, if you have a startup and you have four white male cisgendered founders, guess what? You're gonna have to actually give first a few times to build that trust because you're not representative of the way the world looks. Just the reality. 
So we have intentional inclusion, and there's some other things that are happening, right? There's a lot of bias. Our networks are biased. They just inherently are. I actually struggle to get um, men on panels. It's something new for me. My network is obviously mostly women, so I have to be intentional about that as well. Um, but it's, it's really thinking about human connections, right? Human connections matter. So how do we scale that? Also, um, one of the things we've seen is that there's an increase of jobs. Right now, there's, there's half a million open tech jobs. By the year uh, 2020, there'll be 1.4 million. Um, and at the same time, there's this rise of non-traditional talent. So what does that mean? Boot camps, online education. Um, it's probably more than 60% now. All right, every time I turn, there's a new boot camp that's opening up. Um, but tech companies really don't know how to hire from them, right? Most people that work at tech companies, especially in tech teams, have computer science degrees. So there's bias there. They don't need to know how to hire them. But at the same time, disproportionately, women, we can also assume people of color, LGBTQ people, are going to these boot camps instead of computer science degrees. So we have a huge problem. Um, luckily, the thing I love about being a technologist and working with technologists, how many of you here are technologists? Consider yourself, probably more are, you just you know, have a little imposter syndrome. We'll work through it together. Um, but we love to solve problems, right? At the core of every technologist is someone who wants to solve a problem, and this is a really big challenge. So Lesbian 2 Tech has actually invested in a new uh, project called Tech Up. It's a career fair and summit focused on uh, all underrepresentation groups. Uh, we've been doing tests and experimenting and really trying to understand the ecosystem. Um, and it's led us to include .io. Um, which is a peer-to-peer -peer mentoring tool to get more proxies around talent, right? Especially looking at non-traditional. So we sort of see intentional inclusion, right? All those things, using data, giving first, building trust, um, and also how to validate non-traditional talent um, that hasn't been the norm, but it's continuing to grow. And trust me, if you're a tech company who isn't thinking about this right now, you're gonna get left behind because this is the future. So regardless of representation, which, is, which also matters, um, this is something you're gonna have to figure out. And we really believe if you do these two things, you will build your best team. So we had an event in DC, it was our first one, we showed the beta, um, and this is a little video on it. These videos are great. There's going to be a million open jobs for 2020. This is a huge crisis that companies have to figure out. It's an amazing time to think about the talent of our country because one of the greatest things about the United States is the diversity. So at Facebook, these are the humans. They're 48% white, 46% Asian, 3% Hispanic, 1% black. But maybe Twitter's different. No, 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 1% black. 1% black. And we really saw this pain point around this growth of non-traditional talent. People were getting their skills from online education, from boot camps, and yet a lot of the tech companies were literally just not hiring from them. I've been an engineer for 15 years and I've never worked with a female engineer. If you want to diversify who you're hiring, you have to go to the places that they're diverse. And the boot camps, you walk in and it's just diverse. The boot camp thing everyone's scared of because do we have the resources to then support so that boot camp? Yeah. Hiring is all about eliminating risk and, and the least risky way to hire someone is through direct referrals. The best way to hire is through direct referral, but all our networks are biased. So therefore, um, you have to find other proxies for that same quality. Networks are broken. So just talking about in inclusivity is to actually have a way to do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and a long-term view is to change the way that technical skills are validated internally. Our networks sort of lend ourselves to refer people that look like us. We are scaling relationships, human connections, under peer-to-peer mentoring to get that validation people need to get the job they deserve. So companies can build their best team. And then bam, it's so awesome. Awesome. It's Great. like just exactly what the oh, we're just right now, right now. It's not about charity, it's about prosperity. You like it? You like the idea? Um, so I don't have a lot of time, but it'll re this is sort of how it works. Um, we pair people with mentors, they validate them in many sessions, right? And you're not guaranteeing them that they will work out, you're just saying, yes, I'd bring this person in for an interview. Um, this is kind of still, still in uh, beta. But this is really the sweet spot. So if you're a company on this platform, you can literally search 
by potential candidates that have been validated by people that work at your company. So if you're Twitter, which is the example here, you can search by validated by Twitter employees. So we're not changing the way tech companies hire, we're just being intentional about it and getting more direct referrals outside of your network. Um, that's my team. We're doing a road show next year, which is really exciting, so we're happy to add your city if you're from somewhere else, but we're going all across the country, 27 cities right now, but we're happy to add more because that's how we roll. Um, and we're looking for 10 beta partners. And this is one of my favorite quotes. So we want to enable, right? That was like the most laugh I got out of you guys today. <laughs> Whew, Silicon Valley. Um, we want to enable you to be able to hire people, be intentional about changing the face of technology. So you with me? Ready to change the face of technology? Yeah. All right, thank you very much.